<coughs> yeah, one of the things I do, which is difficult uh, and annoys people and takes up a lot of my time when I'm editing these videos, is that I have a tendency to tut at the beginning of words. So, for example, I do that, or I go, an annoying thing that I do, and so on. And these sounds are called clicks. In that case, that's an alveolar click because it's pronounced just behind the teeth. And they can be produced. They don't occur in English in words, but they do occur in other contexts. For example, kissing, click, click, plopping, a horse, making a sound of a horse, tutting. Another thing I do that annoys people, particularly Liz, is tutting and sighing. And these, yes, as I said, they don't be produced. They're not produced as parts of words. Although there are languages where they are produced, <clears throat> and these languages are mainly the sand languages of southern Africa, as pronounced by the people in the Kalahari Desert. And these are very rich in clicks. Uh, an example of the kind of clicks they have is they have the alveolar click, the palatal click, the retroflex click, which is one of the rarest sounds, along with which is another rare sound and um, there are a number of others. They're usually represented by things like exclamation marks, not equals signs and that kind of thing, and they have also been borrowed into Bantu languages such as uh, Zulu and Tulsa. Now Tulsa, the Bantu language, which is the first language of Nelson Mandela, is interesting because it's supposed to have the hardest tongue twister in the world. Now you're going to have to forgive me if this is not properly pronounced, but that tongue twister is that is, and I would very much welcome anyone who can correct that. It means the skunk rolled over and ruptured his larynx. Now that I find that a bit odd because I don't think skunks are native to Southern Africa. In fact, I know they're not, so I'm not sure why they would have a, unless they borrowed it from another language. And they do borrow. It's a sort of colour coding, as it were, because it shows you loan words that go into Bantu from Khoisan languages. And clearly, there are a lot of those in Khosa. And, um, but they don't generally get beyond that. The interesting thing is you can pronounce them while holding your breath. And that's not, and that's not true of any other sounds in human speech. So that makes them highly unusual. It has been said that the Khoi San people, the San people, actually have unusually high, hard palates, and that's how they can pronounce them, because they can produce more resonance. They are louder than most other speech sounds as well. For example, I don't know if you can hear, but that is extremely loud. And they occur also in loan words into the languages, such as tomato, which I can't remember which one that is, so that's obviously tomato. Another anatomical difference that occurs with speech sounds uh, excludes the sounds p and p from human language because a large no number of people lack the muscles which enable that. So as a result, in particular in the Far East, as a result we don't have any p and p. Those are the pharyngeal sounds which are pronounced down here. However, there are a lot of pharyngeal sounds in other languages which are pronounced, for example, the Arabic p and p which are pretty close. Um, an example of that is the word Gomorrah, which is actually Homora, Homora rather. Um, but they do tend to be absent. I, I'm interested in knowing whether people who come from the Far East can pronounce um, Afroasiatic languages as a result. So it would mean if those were existed in in everyday language that a large number of people would actually have a permanent speech impairment that they couldn't do anything about. So that's presumably why they're absent, because they wouldn't have anything. Another one is glottal stops. Whereas I tend to produce words that start with an alveolar click, the normal English pronunciation in that situation is to put a glottal stop at the beginning, which is largely ignored. That's the uh sound that's found in bottle. It's actually fairly absent in um, English because it gets elided when it's in the middle of a sentence. So you don't say that is a problem. You say that is a problem. But one thing it does do in one dialect of English, including the dialect that I myself speak, is that it gets put into the middle of words instead of a T. So it's glottal, stop, bottle, what a lot of little bottles. And that's quite distinctive. But it occurs also in the other Germanic languages, the languages that are related to English, as a <coughs> significant minimal pair situation. For example, I once said, das ist ein Problem. Das ist ein Problem. 
That's das ist dein Problem. Sounds like to a German. Or das ist ein Problem. That is that is your problem as opposed to that is a problem. So it does make a difference in certain languages and does lead to confusion. So that's it for today. Um, if you like this video, please rate, comment and subscribe. Go and have a look on the pregnancy channel if you're interested in my latest pregnancy vlog. If you dislike it, please tell me why so I can improve. And I apologize for my pronunciation and I'll see you tomorrow.